Hey, listen, y'all, how's it going? Uh, so I'm in the middle of getting me some uh, some work done right now, and I just I just remember the season that I was in a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that, when God took away my ability to provide for myself. He took away my transportation to get work done. I lost everything, all my equipment and the equipment I didn't lose. I ended up having a sale just to get my transportation fixed and didn't have no work coming in at the same time. Didn't have a place to stay. Well, that was my own. All of that, like just uh, maybe two years ago. I, have a, I, I was homeless without a car, no work, no tools and supplies to do work. And let me tell you something, when you're in a se season like that, God is pruning you. It could be one or two things. It could be chastisement uh, to get your attention about something. Uh, maybe it's something you're doing, somebody you're dealing with. Or he could be pruning you or he could be doing them both at once. Because uh, there is a such thing as pruning you and correcting you at one time, because correction. Is really sort of reaching for the same result that pruning is right, but pruning can happen whether you do good or bad and correction happens when you in the wrong somewhere or you around or you in situations that's taken away or that's blocking or making difficult what it is God want to do for you, right? Yeah, because not everybody is meant to go with you and not everything is meant to go with you. Some things need to be, you know, like left behind. You might be doing something in your life that really don't fit where God is trying to take you or for the person he's trying to grow you into, you know, like it ain't always some outside force that you need to deal with. A lot of it is on the inside. And when it is an outside force, it's because there's something on the inside. There is nothing outside of a man or there is nothing that goes into a man that is able to defile him. The, the defiling element is on the inside. So if you in places or with people that's. Uh, that's making difficult what it is God want to do for you. It's because something is in you. Uh, because uh, nobody make you deal with them but you. It's it's a lie you believe in. It's a thing you ain't seeing. It's a lesson you ain't learning. It, it ain't always somebody else's fault. It's you. But uh, you the one uh, who won't leave those people alone. And yeah, some people can make it hard to do that. If you in like the wrong relationship or in the right relationship the wrong way. But some people can make it hard for you to set boundaries. But they can't make you do nothing. If you work in the wrong job and God already put it on your heart that you shouldn't be here. It's you who keep on waking up in the morning and going to clock in. It, it ain't your boss making you. It's you who won't say no. Uh, so always think about that. But what he's trying to do is promote growth or correction and correction also promotes growth. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to clear your path, clear your pathway so that you can see exactly what it is he wants you to do. And sometimes even when you clear your path, you can still have a bit of a confusion If too much get took from you at once and now uh, don't nothing look familiar to you. Nothing. Uh, sometime you need to be took out of the familiar zone because that's when you're going to see God work the most. He's trying to cultivate a relationship with you that he's trustworthy to provide for you no matter what you in. I ain't got a job, but you somehow eat every day. I ain't got a place to call my own, but you somehow got a bed to sleep on or a couch to lay on every night. I don't got no money, but you somehow get a coffee twice a day. 
I was in that situation and God made sure I had a coffee twice a day. No, I should not be addicted to caffeine. Like, I just shouldn't. Right? I wish I wouldn't. Like, I admit that right now. I'm a, I'm a caffeine head. I, I would rather not be. Uh, but he still made sure I had a coffee twice a day. I'm like, well, would you look at that? Well, would you look at that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Would you look at that? He still made sure I was able to... I was able to eat every day. Still. And when some things are coming around that'll cost me money, like making sure I got a phone bill paid, somehow I would always get the money. Don't don't know how. I mean, I, I can't even explain to you all of them situations to be able to tell you how every one of them phone bills got paid. But they still got paid. See, we getting ready to reach a time when Christians are getting ready to be booted out of the economy. People are going to lose their jobs because of what they won't stand for, because of their faith and convictions. And you need to be able to know already that the last time I was in a situation like this, when I had no means to be able to provide for myself, God made sure I stayed alive every one of those days. And not only did he make sure I at least had clothes and a couch to sleep on and water to drink and food to eat. He even went as far as providing my coffee and making sure I had a telephone. That's crazy. He even made sure he provided my coffee. I never forget that. I would go to McDonald's. I'm getting ready to spend my last dollar on just a burger. Oh, here's a free coffee. Somebody didn't want it. I'm like, this is almost every day now. And then I get there and somebody I know is working there who I ain't even know work there. And they just throwing me free food. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rum, rum, rum. I'm like, this is nuts. God is good. You cultivate fellowship with him during them seasons. Don't curse your crisis, man. You will never find fellowship like that when all your needs are always met because it's in it's in your power to do them. It's our first instinct to trip and flip out and wonder why God forsook us. And asking him what's wrong and thinking maybe we just wasn't really saved for real. But like maybe all this time I really didn't know God. But keep believing. Yeah, you might have said some stuff you shouldn't have said. I don't even think I'm a child of God at all. But now how he supposed to be my father and I'm living like this. Man, make sure you close your mouth. Think twice about what you're going to say because you can make your crisis much harder than what it's got to be. You don't want to offend the only one who you looking up to to solve your problems. And we always feel like the person we can count on is the person we more comfortable with offending and treating bad. And here it is, you asking me for my help and you talking to me like that. Now, I think you might have another three months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, like make sure you keep your mouth closed when you in a time like that. But ladies, when you and your man ain't kind of, you know, ain't got the money to keep the bills paid, make sure you ain't dogging him. And here it is, you expecting him to make a way. And you offending him and calling him a, a less of a man because of what y'all both can't do for yourself. It's the same way with men and God. But now you would hate it if your wife did you like that. So you should hate it if you do the father that way. Because at the end of the day, you, you and the Lord are in a marriage relationship. Y'all are in a marriage covenant. It, it it worked the same way.
Like, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, I just had to throw that out there, man. Because I know it's going to be couples that go through stuff like that. And usually the one that run their mouth more is usually the wife. I guarantee you it is. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking from the experience of, the, of dealing with the females my whole life. I had a mother before, too. I've got cousins and I've had girlfriends. I know exactly what I'm talking about. But he's trying to cultivate a greater sense of fellowship with you. But look at this, right? Uh, whatever sticks with you when you go through the fire is what is meant to be with you. If people don't stick with you when but like y'all either going through a storm together or you going through a storm and people, you know, putting you out, kicking you while you down, but talking all this trash to you, telling you to curse God and die like Job's friends. But them are going to be the people who can't share in your blessings. And whatever it is that don't stick with you when you going through the fire is going to be part of what ain't going with you. When God promotes you. Every time I go through a financial crisis, the only, uh, like the very first thing, uh, the only thing left standing, like every time I go through a work crisis, a slow season, the only thing left standing is my uh, photography work. But like that's why I know my cleaning stuff ain't going to be able to last with me for too much longer. Every time it's a slow season and a work crisis, that's usually the first thing to bounce. And he's like, I want to use your gifts. I want to use your gifts. You know, the ones you ask me for. That's what I want to use. Whatever you seem to have left. It's probably what you should. Focus on and it's going to be times when you got to focus on the other stuff that tend to make money faster. Like, you know what I'm saying? But don't focus on what you can't do because God is not judging you on what you can't do. He's judging you on what you can do. Oh, man, I'm so thirsty. Sorry. But, but he's trying to cultivate a greater sense of fellowship with you. And those people who were with you when you were down... Uh, not the people who were around kicking you the whole time you were down and reminding you of everything they had to do for you. No, the people who were with you when you were down, offering you a hand up, expecting nothing in return, but maybe some help or some labor here and there. But those are going to be the people you bind with. But th th think about a man as a blacksmith, right? And he's melting together two metals. What did he got to do? He got to put them in the fire. But you buying metals because, you know, at the end of the day, God do work on us like a blacksmith. Iron sharp as iron. But, you know, you go through the fire, be purified like gold, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's a whole lot of blacksmith ways in how God work on us. But when he putting two metals in the fire to bind them together, if they don't stick together, if they separate, well, then they can't become one and they can't, uh, you know, make a whole new product out of it. But some things can mix with silver in order to make stuff that silver can't be on its own. Uh, some things can mix with gold but to make things that gold would never be on its own. Just like when, when, when uh, the miry clay was mixed with the iron and they wouldn't stick together. When Nebuchadnezzar uh, built the tire, uh, uh, the, uh, the tower, the statue, and you seen the iron mixed with miry clay and they didn't stick together. It's like, it's kind of like that. 
and whatever or whoever don't stick with you when you're going through the fire or if y'all end up going through the fire together, but then y'all can't bind as one. And that goes for whatever too. But when you're going through the fire and there's just some things you can't do, hey, it's going to be a matter of time before you're just going to have to leave that alone. And I know this from experience because I've been through this storm a lot and I see the first thing that end up you know, that end up getting took out of my life. It's usually all the cleaning stuff, all the car detailing stuff, all of that stuff. I do that stuff for a job. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make a career out of it. And I got to that point because God showed me. He's like, hey, this ain't lasting too much longer. All I got to do is put you in a trial and that's going to be the first thing you can't do. Yeah, but you can carry that camera on the backpack and hop on the bus, though. Like He's trying to clear your path to show you exactly what he's going to do for you in your life when he promotes you. And he move you into full time ministry or uh, he move you into full time, whatever it is he wants you to do for his glory. And just because some stuff or some people can't stick with you when God promotes you or be a part of whatever it is that God is going to do in your life, it like it don't mean that it won't come back around. It's just that God want to, you know, he want to give you a heads up so that way you don't end up surprised. But he want to be able to hint at what it is he going to do in your life. When he moves you up to the next level. Like he kind of sort of wants you to know what your assignment is. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he wants you to know like what this is. But nobody accidentally stumbles upon their calling. God shows people what their true calling is. Everybody. Like uh, there's not one person who knows their calling that God did not show that to them. And some people can invent callings. It's a lot of people inventing callings. And I'm sure God done put them through enough fire for them to know, but they just won't let the stuff go. But this ain't about that. Oh, yeah, yes it is. Some stuff you do got to just let go. Be willing to let go of some of your ways, man. Be willing to let go of some of the lies you believe. Be willing to let go of some of your thought processes that got you in the mess to begin with. Don't think just because it's something you started, then that mean that God supposed to go along with you. No, he bought you with a price. This is his life, not yours. No, whatever you got to let go of, don't let nobody make you feel like you wrong for it. Ah, oh, man, man, you stupid, man. Like, no, I'm, no, I'm not stupid. God is showing me something. Oh, man. But most of all, he's trying to cultivate growth. You know, like he's trying to promote growth in you. When plants are doing well, they get pruned. When plants ain't seeming to produce, they get pruned. So don't think just because you're being cut back that that means you're doing something wrong. Oh, this is a good one too, because this kind of word, uh, what I had to learn. But just because God seemed to cut you back some, Stop always looking for what you did so wrong to deserve that. Sometimes you ain't do nothing wrong. But you did what you were supposed to do. It's just time to get cut. Because when you prune those plants on season, on time, they can grow back next year bigger. And pruning plants look like a very horrendous thing. Like, why are you cutting it like that? That was a good plant. It's like, hey, 
hey, I'm working my ground here. Hey, I know exactly what I'm doing. This is what this boy needs. He's going to be double next season. Then after that, he's going to be even more double next season. Man, being pruned is not always about what you did wrong. And don't always let people make you believe you did something wrong to deserve whatever it is you're going through. Man, I remember one season in my life where my car broke down, right? And somebody actually laughed at me. And they meant to send a text message laughing at me to somebody else and it accidentally got sent to me. And they don't even know, like to this day, they don't even know that I called on to that. And when next season came around, I got blessed with a new car. Blessed with a new car. I'll never forget that. I've, I've, I've never had such a great like physical blessing like that before. But like literally, it happened in the spring, early spring, my car break down. In the spring, at the beginning of summer, I got blessed with a whole new one. After everybody laughed at me. Because they believed stuff about me but that just wasn't true. But they looked at me for somebody I wasn't. But they sold a lot of discord in my life too. Laughed at me. I ain't say nothing to them. I never even let them know that I knew that's what happened. I kept my mouth closed. I didn't argue with nobody. I took it for what it was. I, I stay humble before God and God blessed me with a whole lot that season. A whole lot. A whole lot, man. Man, he even, I mean, he even blessed the work in my hands. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got random phone calls from people just giving away camera equipment. I'm like, this is stuff I needed for years. Well, you ain't got to spend $300 on light stands no more. I give you three of them. Like, wait a minute. My light stands were breaking down. Yep, you don't need monitors and screens and none of that. Here go three of them. Yep, you don't need to buy no more microphones. Here go three of them. Four of them. Yep, here's all the cables, all the SD cards, all the attachments to go with everything. Here, you can have it. A random phone call. A guy didn't know me from a can of paint. Man, God is faithful. S stay humble in them seasons. Try your best not to be, you know, going back and forth with people and confronting people about this or that. Because a lot of that, like a lot of that trying to prove yourself and clear yourself up and all that other stuff, like that stuff can lead you into sin. No, like don't let people drag you into uh, word battles and all that stuff. Because when people kick you while you down, man, like that could really hurt your feelings for real. And God will always show you them people who always take every opportunity to kick you while you down. It's like now I got nothing. You want to make sure I got even less that's, that's crazy. And those would be the very people who say that they always helped you. And realistically, they was making your life harder than what, uh, 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 like, <laughs> what like they help was pointless for how uh, hard they made your life to begin with. And most of the time, they really didn't help you. You always paid for what they did for you. That didn't help. That's hiring. Those people that always remind you of what they did for you when you was down. Like, that's not the will of God. That's not godly. 
and like and that stuff will make you mad and burn up on the inside and then to make you go back and forth with people and then whoop before you know it now you led into sin somewhere with your words try not to be led in the sand with your words man because that can make your trial harder than it gotta be especially in prayer is especially when you talking to god Don't do it. He's trying to cultivate a greater sense of fellowship with you. But like that'll be the time when the gifts of the spirit, you know what the gifts of the spirit is, right? But that'll be the time when the gifts of the spirit is operating through you. The worst time in your life, but it, it seemed to be the time you so happy and, and, and free. Man, you can like you can find great joy. In the midst of a trial, I, I guarantee you, you can. I mean, now you ain't too busy. Now your mind ain't wandering all day long. Uh, don't nobody want to talk to you anyway, so you ain't distracted. And you praying all day long. That's, that's all you can do. And that'll be the time when the gifts of the spirit operate through you. When God puts you in situations when somebody need an absolute miracle right now. And pray to God and see if he let you go forward with that. It's a reason he put you there. It's a reason you the one who keeps seeing this happen. It's, it's a reason he got you in that situation. He want to show you his glory and his strength is made in our weakness. He is made strong in our weakness. You want that to be real to you. Stop trying to always fight to get back where you were. And sometimes we can busy ourselves with trying to fight to get back where we oh I need to fight to get my I need to fight to get this wait 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 that's the time when seeing the strength of God can be made real to you but see some people they just think this no you want this to be real but see some people think they walk with God no you want this to be real I don't want to just have this in my head. I want to actually know, like, like I want to participate in this. I don't want to sit around walking around assuming I'm a child of God. Well, you got to believe. Yeah, I mean, belief is where it starts, but then it's got to be made real. Like, you want to pursue this and make this real to you. I want to participate in all them gifts of the spirit. I don't want to sit around just... I don't want to sit around singing worship songs to a God I really don't know like that. No, I want to know him like that. I don't want my worship to be based on something I don't know is actually true. And we must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you ain't been through what it is you singing, it's not true to you. If you don't actually stand for what it is you're singing, it's not true to you. I'm like, what's a worship song? There's another in the fire, right? There is another in the fire. And you in that fire? And you don't actually see him in that fire with you? <laughs> Making sure not one stitch of your clothes get burned. But how you know you ain't singing a lie? I mean, it ain't a lie realistically. It's just a lie to you because, like, you ain't have him stand with you in the fire. You got to, man, like, you got to stand for God when you on your way to the fire and he'll stand in the fire with you. Like you want this to be so real to you, can't nobody, nobody tell you you a child of the devil. It don't matter who say it. This is real to me. 
And this became real to me in the fire, not when all my needs is met all the time. See, some people serve a Jesus of meet my needs. And there ain't nothing wrong with Jesus meeting your needs. He will. But some people's relationship with Christ is all based on what he's doing for them. No, my relationship with Christ is based on I knowing who I know, not what he do for me, but not what I want from him, but who I know. Yeah, he still do stuff for you, but my relationship ain't based with Christ but because of what he did for me. It's because of who I know, but not what I think, but who I know, but, but not what I know, but who I know. He's trying to cultivate a relationship with you of who you know, not what you know or what you sing or what scriptures you know. Or 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 making sure you got everything you need and. Even when you got nothing you need. You need for nothing. See, some people can't comprehend that. Even when I got nothing I need, I need for nothing. I ain't got the money, but guess what? I ain't got the expenses either. Even when you got nothing you need, you need for nothing. That's the kind of God you want to see operating your life. Then he can trust you and making sure you have everything you need. Because if your relationship with God is all based on what he do for you, man, that ain't relationship. Like that really ain't no relationship at all. Oh, but what have you done for me lately? Like, you know how I many relationships is all based on what somebody do for them? If you no longer do it, then I no longer need you or want you. If you ain't paying all my bills, I don't need you. If you ain't sleeping with me, I don't I don't need you. If you ain't making me happy, I don't need you. Like you don't need like you don't want to have your happiness come from people or things or money or jobs or careers or nothing like that. Like you don't want but the whole joy of your existence to be based on outside stuff but that's not christianity if you depressed and sad because your man don't tell you that you're beautiful something wrong with that but didn't he say that you're accepted in christ like if your acceptance don't first come from christ no matter what somebody do or don't tell you or do or don't do for you Hey, you might want to double check where you actually stand with God. If your woman ain't cooking and cleaning. And you feel like your life suck and oh, she don't do this, she don't do that. I'm, I'm just so, man, bro, get up and cook your own food. <laughs> Heck, you accepted in Christ. At least he made sure you had food to cook. Oh, my boss ain't gave, give me that raise. He gave it to so-and-so. So what? And so what if your boss ain't give you a raise? God can give you a raise by making sure he lower your expenses. A, a dollar saved is also a dollar earned. Right? Heck, next thing you know, the phone company call you and you want a promotion. And you got $20 a month off, off, off your bill for the... Uh, 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 like for the rest of your term, like with them. Hey, I just made twenty dollars. Like you know what I'm saying. Uh, trusting God is not always gonna look like the outside stuff. Uh, somebody told me to vote for Trump because of gas prices. 
I said, I'm not voting for Trump hoping he saved gas prices for me. I'm, I'm, I'm voting for Jesus Christ to make sure gas prices don't bother me at all. But see, but trusting in man, that's, that's another thing. You don't want to put your trust in man. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and make flesh his arms and his heart depart from the Lord. It's a package deal. But the moment you start putting your trust in man, your heart departs from the Lord. It, it, it does not, like it ain't separate. It's all part of a package deal. I got to vote for Trump to make sure he lowered the cost of living. No, I'm trusting in God to make sure even if the cost of living go up skyrocket high, it has no effect on me. Now, see, trusting in man can put you in a situation of, yeah, I voted for Trump and yeah, he lowered gas prices. But now I ain't got a job anyway to even buy cheap gas. I can't buy none. And trusting in God can be, yeah, I voted, yeah, I voted for Christ. I, I put my trust in Christ. And let's just say Trump still won and gas prices went up even higher. Like, let's say they went up 50% higher. But, but because your trust was in God, your income went up 200%. But you won't even think about gas. Everybody, oh man, this gas price is high as heck now. you like... I don't know nothing about gas prices. All I do is pump it, stick my credit card in and fill it up. Heck, it ain't hurting me none. That's the kind of stuff God is willing to do for you and you put your trust in him when you in that fire. You in the fire and nothing burned. But not your hair, not your clothes, not your pockets. Not nothing. But here it is. You got nothing you need and need for nothing. But when he take away your ability to provide for yourself and you don't know what you're going to do. And you can't do nothing, even if you could do something. Then put your trust in the Lord. And watch him work. I mean, you're going like, to see something you never thought was possible. Something you never thought was possible. At least for you. But it got to start by believing it's possible. You just didn't think about stuff before that when you was comfortable. Everybody want a life of comfort. I want a life of joy in Christ. Because like when 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 all the pieces are sitting right before me and I know how my bills are getting paid and all of that, man, like you like it's harder to really have greater fellowship with him when all of your needs are in your control. If you don't got something that you absolutely trust in God for every day, then but why would you get up and pray? No, first thing you're going to do is get right up and go to work. But the first thing you're going to do is get right up and look at everything you've gotten and put your joy in that. But see, like this stuff that I'm telling you is not what everybody do. Like what I'm telling you is normal. Like this is how normal people are supposed to be. And people will call you abnormal because you live 100% by faith. It's like, no, this is how we pose to live. I'm normal. Y'all are just common. But that's different. All God is trying to do is make you a normal person who walk 100% by faith. And normal is not common. Well, any normal man would have went and found a job. It's like, yeah, I try to do that. Well, any normal man would have never felt comfortable living like this. It's like, yeah, I went that route before and God, you know, he shot it down. I ain't, I ain't even about to sit around fighting for my life all the time. I already know nothing I'm going to do is going to be able to get me out of this. 
it's time for me to learn to trust God 100%. Stop clinging to the thoughts, thought processes and ways of this world. Because that's not what normal Christianity is. Well, any normal man would have had this figured out. It's like, well, now you mean common. I trust in God. That makes me normal. I have no financial security. You know how many people look at me like I'm not a normal person? I'm like, I walk around here like nothing bothers me. Yeah, I mean, stuff do bother me. I, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I don't know where my next dollar is coming from. God had it be that way. In fact, it's been years like that. I got more than I had when I had financial security. I got more than I had when all of my needs were in my power. Hey, I got stuff that people who make more money than me can't afford. And uh, that's not glory to me. That's glory to God. It's all for a purpose. It, it ain't for me to sit around glorying in the stuff I have. It all serves a purpose. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have had nothing. Trust me, because I've been in situations that should have broke me all the way to the point that I had nothing. I've been in situations that should have made me want to give up on life and live under a bridge. All hope is lost. Forget it. Always homeless. Always without a car, always in a slow season. And then it just changed. My trust was in God, not in what people did for me or what I was able to do for myself. I'm on my last $20 right now. I, I got both of my kids with me. Well, one of them on his way to be getting... Well, well, one of them I got to pick up the moment I get the rest of this carpet clean. I'm helping out a friend right now, so. And I'm going to go pick him up as soon as I get this carpet clean. I'm on my last 20. Man, these kids eat $20 a day a piece. Man, my car. Gas hog. That's a, at, at least 20 a day. And I'm on my last twomp, dude. Like, for real. Don't even know how I'm going to figure this out. I bet you would get figured out. Man, God is cultivating a relationship with me where my mind does not have to focus on those things. But so that way my mind can focus on doing the work of the Lord, helping y'all over here on the internet. If I ain't got to think about how we eat and I can think about what to say to help somebody out in a trial right now. Man, that's all God is trying to do. He's trying to take your mind off of all the things that he can do for you without even lifting a finger. So that way your mind can worry about the more important matters of the kingdom. If, if, if I don't have to break my back and wreck my brain on how we gonna eat every day, then I'm I'm freed up to do the work of the Lord. But that's normal Christianity. Uh, but it's not common, and therefore people are gonna call you abnormal. Like you know how many people told me every normal man has a regular job. A normal man. Man, you ain't normal. Heck, I would have had this. I would have been doing that. I would have been trying to retire from somewhere. Hey, ain't nobody getting no 401ks. The economy going to crash. And the first thing that gets swallowed up in the stock market crash is 401ks. Now, why would I break my back right now to work for something I could possibly not have in another two years? And I'm a whole 30 away from actually getting it. Man, I don't even want to worry about all that. 
I'm going to use the one life I have right now to do, uh, to uh, you know, to work for the matters of the kingdom. I'm freed up to spend more time with the people who God put me in front of. And the people God take away from me. I mean, I like, you know, I just got to leave that in his hands and make sure that, you know, that they all doing doing what's right and doing well and. Like, and they all focusing on uh, their relationship with God. All the stuff God take away from me. Hey, I can't do nothing about it, man. I'm crying over spilled milk. But what can I do today? Uh, that's another thing you want to think about is what can I do today? Like, what should I be doing right now? Uh, not what yesterday should have been like. Not what shouldn't have happened the day before yesterday. No, what can I do right now? But what can I do today? Okay. If all the work of trying to meet my needs is not stuff that I can do, even if I try to, then maybe that ain't what I need to be focusing on today. Maybe I just need to trust that God will figure that out and I got to figure out what he want from me right now. I want you to serve me. Okay, how you want me to do that? Well, now you got the time. You lost your job because you won't call he or she and she or he. But you couldn't pay your car note because you lost your job. Now you can't get to work even if you had a job. Well, now you got the time to focus on what your calling is. And now you got the time to cultivate a deeper relationship with the person you call Lord. Everybody wants Jesus as a savior, but not Lord. It's funny how that worked, too. Do you know the Lord? Yes, I know the Lord. But do you know him as your Lord? Your master? That's all he's trying to do is cultivate that kind of relationship with you. That's it. But this could all be so simple. But we complicate everything. We always trying to figure out what should I be doing? I mean, yeah, like to some extent you want to do that. But if there ain't no way for you to provide for yourself right now. But maybe that ain't what you should be doing. But maybe you leave that matter in God's hands and figure out who he wants you to preach to. And figure out who he wants you to lead to Christ and give the gospel to. Hey, go for a walk. Look, just go for some walks. Look, do that. Go walking. Look, like, like that, look, that's one of the best things you can do. When you're in a situation like this, just go for some long walks. Burn your legs. Forget it. Walk and talk to God. Go and actually walk with God. Like for real, go do that literally. Go on a walk with God. Go take you a hiking stick and put on your boots and go walk with God for real. Like you say you do. Man, you will hear stuff in prayer. You wish you would have been hearing all this time. All of a sudden, all your sins come up on your mind. Like, oh, God, I was so wrong for this. I mean, you listen to your Bible on the audio book and you learn and stuff you never caught on to. Man, just go for a walk. Uh, like, go get involved in matters of the kingdom. Uh, focus on your gifts. Uh, you know, not your skills, but your gifts. Yeah, and they might be skills too, but focus on your gifts. Uh, he might want to promote you in that area. Instead, you breaking your back every day to flip somebody's burgers, and you over here a whole music producer. And now you lose your job and you lose your car, but you still got your music producing equipment. Uh, like, go focus on that. God might got something in store for you right there. But he had to clear your path because you busy in yourself with stuff that don't matter to you. But like, what does it matter to you that somebody else get a hamburger and you got whole skills and gifts that you can use for the kingdom right now? 
Man, you know how many praise and worship singers need beats? <laughs> like for real? Man, you might upload a beat on the internet, man. Somebody call you right now. I give you five grand for that. Like, in fact, I put you on a on a on a contract with our team. All because you took the time to focus on your gifts. No, they might not be making money right now, but God can do anything. And we always want to focus on well, what's going to make the money today. I, I need to know how I'm going to eat today. Man, focus on your gifts. God will take care of that. Now focus on what you even believe you called to do. And if you ain't called to do it, let God clear that up for you. But most of the time, if that's what you believe, it probably is an element of truth to it. But probably just not in the way you doing it. Right? But maybe you are meant to be a leader, but just not a pastor. But maybe you are meant to make music, but probably not secular rap and hip hop. Just focus on your gospel stuff. Man, clear some of that worldly stuff out, out of your mind. Hey, that's probably why you in the trial to begin with. Like, because like, like, you're doing too much to serve the world and not the kingdom. You're supposed to be a child of God. Like, he want to clear some of that out. Man, he trying to grow you up spiritually and you, and you focusing on, like, the worldly stuff. Man, forget it. Man, go write you a movie script. And go uh, compose a symphony, something. God might have something in store for you with your gifts. Hey, write a new business model. I mean, maybe you busy in yourself with stuff that ain't serving you that much of a purpose. And you don't really got the time to figure out what can actually change your life. Because you're running a rat wheel every day with stuff that's barely getting you by. And because you won't just willingly stop and say, let me struggle for a little bit so I can figure out a better, you know, plan for my future. Then he had to just yank you out of it. Heck, next thing you know, you focus on starting your business and, and, and stuff like that. And now you make a whole extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. A whole extra two hundred thousand. You went from thirty thousand dollars a year working all day long, but to a hundred thousand dollars a year working part time every other day. God can do stuff like that, and but you can't be buying into the stuff of this world to be what will solve your needs. You got to buy into the kingdom. Buy into the kingdom wholeheartedly. That's why. That's why you in this season right now It's for him to cultivate a kingdom mindset in you. Amen.